Welcome to another edition of Lakeville City Council Wrap-Up. During this program, we will highlight the agenda items presented to the Lakeville City Council at their July 6th, 2015 meeting. First highlighted item on the agenda is item number 5B, Police Department Annual Report. And to provide the background information on this agenda item is Chief of Police, Jeff Long. Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, this is our presentation of the 2014 Annual Report. Uh, you will have to think back a little ways as we are already into July, but quite a bit happened uh, in the year 2014. I started in January, uh, late January of 2014, and one of the uh, objectives of the year was to take a look at the organization, see how it's functioning. One of the major uh, undertakings for the year was a reorganization of how the police department was set up. Uh, the most important piece that we were doing differently is we added a business manager position. We felt that uh, with the data privacy laws and all the uh, requirements for retention and uh, a budget reaching uh, close to $10 million, that it was time to have someone with a business background um, run that part of the budget. And we've done that. We put that in place. And then we broke down the patrol divisions into two different areas. They work 12-hour shifts. Uh, Two shifts work days, two shifts work nights. Then we added a division called operations, and that was originally titled community operations because that is the area of the police department that is out in the community the most. Our community service officers, which handle things such as uh, animal complaints, uh, vehicle lockouts, minor parking complaints, things such as that, as well as our street crimes unit, traffic unit, and our new training officer position that will oversee all training of police officers. Uh, not on the street training, but training that's required, and I'll have a separate slide on that in a little bit. And then finally, our investigations area, which has our two school resource officers, five detectives, and our drug task force officer. Another major undertaking in 2014 was adjusting the way that our patrol zones are set up. Uh, I've made no secret that I'm not happy with the way our response time looks, and I think that there is a way to improve that. So this had not been looked at in a really long time, and uh, by patrol zone, that's where we station at least one officer per shift. And so you can kind of see the structure where we utilize uh, County Road 50 a little bit, uh, 35, and also Dodd. We're hoping the north-south will help us and the one major east-west will help us to respond to calls sooner. We will have a little better idea at the end of this year how we're doing. Notable cases in 2014, uh, we had a domestic assault and criminal vehicular operation. The result in the substantial bodily harm of one of our police officers. Uh, we were responding to a domestic in which a male was assaulting two juveniles. While en route, they uh, literally bumped into each other. The uh, offender's vehicle deliberately struck the officer, uh, causing a uh, pretty significant head injury. We had an ar arson and insurance fraud that actually started in 2013. The Detective Dave Watson was working with Faribault PD, but due to his work that was completed in 2014 with successful charges, he was actually awarded the Minnesota Chapter of International Arson Investigators Association Team Award. We had a uh, person that was, well, was found frozen to death, literally. Um, it was a suspicious death because when things happen with hypothermia, uh, severe hypothermia, there's paradoxical undressing. So when we find this, we were very suspicious. It turns out it was just an unfortunate accident. We had a $1.7 million theft where a Hearthside employee uh, conspired and successfully defrauded the company. We worked with the FBI, the Postal Inspector's Office, and the Department of Treasury to compile the cases that resulted in six federal indictments. We had a fugitive from justice that was living in our community. Uh, a rather violent murder occurred in 1983 in Denton, Texas. Uh, through current DNA procedures, they were able to solve a cold case. The person is uh, now in Texas uh, pending trial. <coughs> Excuse me. Of course, we had a uh, uh, deceased body found in Ritter Farm Park in 2014. That was uh, someone that had been missing in our community since 2012. Some of the challenges that we're facing in, in 2014 and beyond uh, basically the calls for service. We've talked a little bit about this to the council. It's not necessarily the number of calls for service, it's the amount of time that the calls of service for service are now taking. As you know, mental health issues have been a, uh, a, a troubling thing, uh, not only for our community, but nationwide. We had a, a, another incident today, suicide involving a gun. 
And these calls are taking a considerable amount of time in which we're working very hard to reach out to uh, some of the victims that are suffering from uh, mental illness and we're uh, revisiting it and putting them in touch with crisis lines and our chaplains and our police officers. And it's calls such as this that are just taking more time than what police officers used to do. Assaults, uh, primarily domestic related assaults, are very time consuming. The wep number of weapons calls that we're getting now, not necessarily because people are in violation, but because there's just so many of them now. Uh, there's been a, a past several years a onslaught record number of permits to purchase uh, pistols that have been going on. So we're facing a lot of guns out on the street and, and a lot of thefts. We took a theft report just this week uh, of which a gentleman uh, went to check for his gun in his car. He hadn't checked in about a month and it's missing. He doesn't know where it went. So it's things such as this that they're legally purchased but they're not legally or properly secured. DUI and DWIs, you know, those calls take about an average of two hours. Uh, we've addressed that in 2015 with a specific officer that through a grant from the state of Minnesota will be working DUIs, so we're excited about that. Touched on mental health and then also traffic enforcement. We're in a city close to 40 square miles with a lot, a lot of roadways and a lot of complaints about the speeds of traffic, cut through traffic, aggressive driving, things of that sort. sort. But with three or four officers on per shift, it, it's trouble addressing uh, all the traffic complaints that are out there. Kind of the fun things in our department, the canine program, Tank and Zeus. Most of you have met Tank and Zeus. Zeus is pending retirement. Uh, we just posted for a new dog um, that'll be going to training the next year. Zeus will be done at about uh, December or so. But they had a, another successful year. The Dakota County Drug Task Force, Officer Jeff Hansen has been assigned out there for a number of years now. His canine, Marley, uh, worked over 150 sniff requests for the Drug Task Force which led to 40 search warrants and the seizure of firearms and drugs in all the major categories, including six pounds of meth and over $95,000 in cash. The drug task force work resulted in 697 arrests in 2014. We have our public safety chaplaincy plan. We have five volunteers that have a variety of duties. One of their primary duties is responding and providing comfort at death scenes and death notifications. They focus on employee wellness throughout the entire city. They serve as liaisons between the departments and the community. And uh, they've been expanded with new roles and responsibilities, including our mental health intervention team, which is what I touched on a few minutes ago, in which we, some, when someone has a mental health crisis, we do return uh, within a couple weeks to uh, visit with a person and making sure that they have the resources that they need to be healthy. Our reserve officer unit continues to be strong. We had 16 volunteers in 2014 with a little over 3,300 hours served. There are some events they worked at, Panaprog, Taste of Lakeville, sporting events, call outs, major incidents. And they uh, also spent 1,000 hours, hours patrolling our streets. And there's a picture of Reserve Officer of the Year, Brian Bix Bixby, who's also in training to be a law enforcement officer. Training is uh, a time consuming thing in law enforcement. Uh, we spent uh, 2,048 hours in training in 2014, which is the equivalent of one full-time employee. Approximately 40 hours of those are post-mandated. In other words, we're required to take these classes by law. Another 40% of those hours are just maintaining certifications. And then the last 20% is training on new skills or training for recently uh, newly hired officers. They can bring them up to skills with things like tasers, medical training, um, DUI detection, things of that sort. Some of the training highlights, I won't go through them all, but you can kind of see what our training involves, firearm qualifications, defensive tactics. You'll see data master certification, that's the DUI um, instrument that measures uh, the blood alcohol content. Canine training or field training, uh, one of the uh, classes that we added this year was a de-escalation strategies for military veterans in crisis. Um, investigations of suicides, report writing, things of that sort. And the picture to the right is just kind of a neat uh, picture. It's two of our newest officers, Officer Anya Eichinger and Officer Natalie Anderson. Our crimes for the uh, past uh, several years, uh, criminal sexual conducts have remained uh, pretty well steady. Domestic assaults are, uh, you know, they're up and down, they're cyclical. Uh, 2014 provided a few less. And the other salts, again, this is typically cyc cyclical. Uh, the numbers are a little bit higher, but nothing significant, increase or decrease. 
property crimes, these tend to be uh, the nonviolent crimes, but also the most crimes that we sustain here in Lakeville. Larceny and theft. Um, I, I won't read all the numbers. You can see the green is 2014, and the other colors are the years preceding that. Burglaries, I found that very interesting. We actually had, um, it seemed like we had more because we had a, a large number of complaints right along the freeway of burglaries, but we actually added up the numbers there a little bit down last year. Property damage, pretty much consistent. Vehicle theft is up considerably. Um, that was kind of a surprise to us. And we'll cover this in one of our upcoming council meetings, but we did apply and did receive a vehicle theft grant, which will allow us to aggressively attack uh, the theft of vehicles, not only in our community, but Apple Valley and Rosemont also. Our response to citizens, medical emergencies are up slightly, but that's not unexpected when you have a growth in population. Animal calls are down slightly. In part of our reorganization, we uh, eliminated the animal control officer. So some of the calls that were uh, slotted as animal calls um, were handled in different ways. Uh, so those numbers are down a little bit. Alarms uh, were down slightly from 2013, but consistent with other years. And calls of suspicion, I thought this was very good news. We constantly are telling people, if you see something, something suspicious, please call us. And it appears people are doing just that, so that is good news. Our CAD incidents, this is the total number of calls that we were either dispatched on or generated over the last several years. Um, we were down a little bit in 2014, uh, which I'm going to talk about why that occurred in uh, just a minute. Traffic crashes, uh, consistent. It was a rough winter in 2014. I'm not surprised that is up a little bit. It was very cold, very snowy. Speed citations were down. Um, what I found interesting as I was going through these numbers, I look at 2012. Uh, for the total of the year, there was 1,270 citations. We've already surpassed that in 2014, or 2015. In DUI, we're on a pace to well exceed that 200 number in uh, this year also. Traffic stops in general. It shows you uh, what we've done over the last several years. Again, I will talk about why those numbers fluctuated so much from 2012 uh, to 2014 very shortly. Talking points, as I said at the beginning of this presentation, 2014, the reorganization was one of the um, largest efforts that we undertook. At one point, we were short 15 officers. That involved uh, people that were on uh, injury, uh, military, uh, resignations, um, a variety of different issues. We're currently down just three. By the end of the summer, we hope to be down by just one. So it's taken about 18 months, but we've made significant progress in retaining the officers we have and hiring good officers. There's a significant amount of hiring going on in the metro area due to the pension law change that occurred last year. Experienced officers are in high demand. We fell victim to that as we were losing some officers to other cities. So we needed to come up with something that we could offer, offer to our current employees and attract other employees uh, to stay here. We think we've done that with the reorganization in which we're have a significant number of supplemental duties that officers can work to get them out of the squad car and try something different, whether it's an investigative spot, school resource officer, DUI officer, uh, MAG team. Um, we just have a variety of different things for officers to now partake in. I talked a little bit about our stats being different in 2014. Part of that was that we had no traffic officer, we had no street crimes officers, and we did not have the training coordinator. We also had one investigator position left open. This had a significant impact on any self-initiated calls. When you're down 15 people, we were really just hoping to fill shifts, and we were even having trouble doing that at times. So our numbers were a little bit off uh, in 2014. I suspect you're going to see a significant difference when I'm doing this next year at this time. Those officers minus the training coordinator have uh, either are in the process of being filled or are filled right now. The officers that we do have here, I have found uh, after 18 months, are very dedicated and committed to public safety in Lakeville. We're seeing more and more officers that want to come here. Our last few hiring process, these, we've hired two Hennepin County Sheriff Office employees, one Metro Transit officer, one Montgomery officer. And for the current application process we have, we have a number of experienced officers that told us they are going to be applying uh, from some of the other metropolitan cities. So that's very good news for us. People want to work here. And I give that to uh, the supportive community that we have. 
Um, I found a great deal of support here in Lakeville for the police department. We're constantly hearing good things. The city council has been very supportive of us and we're extremely appreciative of that. And also I have a very hardworking command staff that has worked really hard over the last 18 months to change some things in the PD um, to put us back on the right track. Not that we were on the wrong track, but obviously some things were going wrong when we are down that many employees. The focus on 2015 has been getting us back to business, setting new priorities and new programs, and I look forward to talking about that uh, over the next uh, six months as we wrap up 2015 and then also for the uh, annual report next year. And I'll end it with our mission statement. Uh, we have reiterated this to all of our employees that we are to be working in partnership with the community. We are to be reducing crime, solving problems, and ensuring that there's a good quality of life in Lakeville. With that, I will stand for any questions. Next highlighted item on the agenda is item number 5D, Public Works Monthly Report. And to give the background information on this agenda item is Public Works Director Chris Petrie. Thank you, Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, this evening's report is for the Public Works Department for June of 2015. A majority of the report focuses on a lot of the projects that we have going on around the community and the first one that I'll highlight is our water uh, treatment facility improvements and the majority of that project consists of adding an additional million gallons of underground storage uh, behind the water treatment facility uh, that is used ultimately to be pumped out into our distribution system. Once completed that will bring the total storage capacity up to 4.1 million gallons at that facility. And as you can see by the photos, uh, the slab, the walls, the columns in the new reservoir are, uh, have been completed and you can see now the actual deck or the top of the reservoir is what is being worked on. Um, something important to note is the interior, the walls, but specifically the columns function as baffles as the water moves through this reservoir after it's been treated. Uh, it allows that pockets of water do not uh, develop that become stagnant. So it ultimately helps to continually mix the water and keep the chemicals uh, in suspension in the water. Uh, the project does remain on schedule. Uh, once the decking, of course, is complete and it's sealed up, the tank will actually be uh, tested for leaks and then it will be put into service after that. Uh, the next update is our 2015 street reconstruction project. Uh, phase one, or the first year of the project, continues, as the council and uh, those in attendance might recall. Uh, it's phased over two years. Uh, again, uh, it's on schedule and it continues uh, with concrete curb and gutter installation. You can see that there. You can see some grading. You can see also in the photo on the right side the installation of a new sidewalk. Uh, both contractors are progressing well, although we have, of course, suffered a few setbacks with the weather. Today would be a good example of that. Uh, the 5060 Roundabout is the next project I'd like to highlight. Uh, of course, if you've driven by, you can't go through it, as everyone is well aware, but if you've driven by specifically on the western leg of it over near Buffalo Wild Wings near Orchard Trail, you can see that uh, there are sections that have concrete curb and gutter now, uh, even have some pavement down. Uh, so it's continuing on uh, as the contractor works to finalize some relocation of small utilities. Uh, the project is still on uh, schedule to be completed by the end of August. Next uh, slide here is our Holyoke Avenue water tower, which is just north of uh, this facility here. Uh, site excavation and preparation for the foundation is complete and you can see in this photo the crews are placing rebar uh, to start pouring the foundation. Uh, quite an extensive amount of rebar uh, that's used to uh, put that two million gallon water tower on top of it. Uh, the actual pour of the foundation is scheduled for this Thursday weather permitting so you'll see a lot of uh, concrete trucks coming in and out of that site on Thursday of course, prior to any activities for Panaprog um, over the weekend. Uh, so once the foundations poured, what we'll see next, uh, latter part of July and into August, is the, a separate crew mobilizing to start uh, constructing the column of the water tower, and that's also going to be constructed out of concrete, and you'll see that occur over uh, the fall. 
this is a project that is expected uh, to still take about another 12 to 18 months and uh, expected completion is in the fall of 2016. Uh, the next slide here is the Well 20 construction. Uh, this construction began uh, the last week of June, and the well is located in Cherry View Park, right up near the parking lot and the warming house and hockey rink area. Uh, the new well, of course, is needed to ensure that additional capacity is available to meet our customer demands, as well as uh, the emergency needs in our water system. Drilling of the well will be relatively quick. The type of method that's being used here is a rotary drilling method versus uh, maybe some of you that are familiar with it. Another uh, style of well drilling is a cable tool where they actually pound through the layers of bedrock. This is actually a drill that goes through it. So we're, we're hopeful that this will be completed by the end of summer. And then what will occur will be the final installation of the rest of the piping, the pumps, the motors, the electrical equipment. And the expectation is that the well will be completed or substantially complete yet this year and will be ready uh, to go online uh, next spring and in time for the peak season of 2016. A couple other project updates. We don't have photos because these actually haven't started yet, but the Hamburg Avenue Improvement Project, uh, we continue to coordinate all of the contracts for that. Those have been finalized. And then we're also continuing to work out uh, JPA with uh, the Watershed District and Dakota County Soil and Water Conservation uh, Group for some drainage improvements in that area. As soon as that takes place, uh, meaning the drainage improvements, uh, the road work will take place and that will occur in the fall. Kensington Boulevard, that improvement project, our pre-construction meeting is actually scheduled for tomorrow morning and uh, it's anticipated that construction will begin shortly after uh, that pre-construction meeting. Again, I want to emphasize that once that construction occurs and begins, we recognize that there is some additional traffic on Kensington. So besides the, the need to make sure that the businesses in that area continue to have access, we will also ensure that uh, it's not impacting any of the additional traffic that we see on the roadway uh, to cause any further delays than, than may already be uh, there because of the 5060 project. The last few slides, it is the end of the second quarter, so I wanted to highlight our water use year to date. Water use for 2015 is up just slightly over our 10-year average. You can see that on the far right of, of the graph here. We're up about 2% over our 10-year average. And so far, our total water use for the year through June is 957 million gallons. Monthly water use, you can see May and June was a little below the 10-year average. We did have uh, some wet weather during those months. And I would believe that that is the uh, contributing factor to seeing it uh, slightly below the 10-year average. And lastly, we have our water use per person or per capita. Uh, again, we've seen an impressive reduction specifically in June, thanks to the weather. Our 10-year average is about 163 gallons per person per day. Uh, in the month of June, it was 127 uh, gallons per person per day. So we're definitely pleased with those, uh, those numbers. And that does conclude the monthly report for June 2015. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Next highlighted item on the agenda is item number 10, public hearing to consider a business subsidy under the Business Subsidy Act for Lakefield Technologies, LLC, and Mendel Machine and Manufacturing Incorporated. And to provide the information on this agenda item is Community and Economic Development Director Dave Olson. Uh, thank you, Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, I've been before you several times in the last several months talking about the, uh, this project, and it's one I've been uh, very fortunate to work on. Um, the, this is the last step in the process, and uh, I'm actually going to follow this item up with the last item on your agenda, which is the approval of the preliminary and final plan and an easement vacation, which basically sets the stage for the expansion of the building. But um, as been previously discussed, uh, Lakeville Technologies LLC, which is the entity that owns the um, real estate and the building, is proposing to construct an 18,700 uh, square foot expansion. 
the, the, the good thing and, and what's made this project a little bit easier is that the, the principles for both Lakeville Technology LLC and, and Mendel uh, Manufacturing are one and the same and Brian Bartz is uh, controlling interest of both of those entities which made the discussions very uh, straightforward. Uh, but they're expanding by 18,700 square feet of their existing 32,000 square foot building. Obviously, as, as Mr. Bartz has indicated, uh, they are experiencing considerable growth and need to add additional warehouse and manufacturing space. Uh, the company several months ago submitted an application for tax income and financing to assist in the 400, over $455,000 in eligible site development costs associated with the property. You'll see in a little bit when I show you the uh, preliminary plat uh, drawings, but one of the reasons that made these costs higher than typical uh, is that because of the uh, need and desire to maximize the development of the site, they're going to be handling stormwater uh, treatment underneath the parking lot, and they install these chambers that go underneath the parking lot, and it's, uh, it's certainly an effective way to uh, handle stormwater, uh, but it is also a more expensive way to uh, handle stormwater. But it, it does allow, uh, and this, uh, as we've discussed several times over the last few years with, with Brian and his staff, this will maximize the site uh, for, for Mendel at their current location. The proposed TIF assistance is based uh, on the uh, ass uh, assessor's market value uh, determination of the proposed expansion and is anticipated to be an amount not to exceed 155912 uh, And I'll get to, uh, just in a second, the um, documents in front of you uh, that correct that, uh, put that correct number in a couple places in the agreement uh, uh, that weren't, it hadn't previously been, been identified. Uh, currently, there are 94 employees uh, at, at Mendel, and uh, one of the requirements of this agreement is that they have well, and that may have changed. Uh, this was from a month or two ago, but uh, um, the uh, the good thing is is that, as, as, as Brian pointed out, they're adding jobs and they're high-skill, high high-wage and professional jobs and the type of jobs we're uh, promoting and through our strategic plan in Lakeville. The pay-as-you-go uh, way this, this agreement is structured is that as the taxes are paid in subsequent years after the, the addition has been uh, in place and is now counted uh, and captured separately in a tax increment district. Uh, the city is uh, obligated under this agreement to provide 95% of the captured increment back to the business on twice annual payments or reimbursements to the business. Hence the term pay as you go. As the company expands and, and the taxes become due on the expansion, we capture those taxes and pay them back and reimburse the developer for these um, for these uh, expenses, which only amount to about a third of the total site improvement cost for the um, for the uh, project, uh, the goals are our job creation goals are real too. Um, we're actually hopeful that the job creation numbers will be higher, uh, but we we set a goal that both the company and the city were comfortable with, and uh, uh, if everything goes according to a plan, I'm I'm guessing uh, that these goals will be exceeded. But this is the goal we established, i.e., the 12 jobs that were identified or are identified in the agreement. And one of the other requirements uh, is under Minnesota state law that once a business receives a subsidy, they have to maintain their operations in your community for a minimum of five years. And if for some reason they were to move or relocate out of Lakeville within f uh, sooner than five years, there is a provision in the statute to require a prorated reimbursement back for any of the assistance that's been provided. So uh, we're confident and, uh, in our discussions and our uh, negotiations with Mendel that that's not likely to occur, but that is a provision that was put in state statute a number of years ago and, um, and we're obligated to operate under. Uh, the City Council approved the uh, creation of the TIF district for this project uh, at your June 15th City Council meeting. Um, that set the stage to come forward now with the development contract that is the binding agreement between the city and, uh, and the business. And it's a three-way agreement between the city and Lakeville Technologies LLC and uh, Mendel Manufacturing because the, the entity that owns the property is ultimately responsible for paying the property taxes, but the company that operates the business is the entity that's responsible for creating the jobs. So it's a three-way agreement between those two entities and the city. EDC has reviewed this project several times. Their last recommendation on it came at their May 26th meeting. Uh, I would like to point out that the changes that were put in front of you um, apply to page 16 and then Schedule B. 
And it should have said uh, uh, the amount, and I'll put my glasses on to make sure I get this right, but the total amount of the assistance not to exceed the TIF amount of assistance is $155,912, which is slightly higher, uh, about $9,000 higher than the, uh, than the amount that was included in the uh, agreement, which was a previous amount uh, and should have been uh, should have been changed to reflect this. So it's in section uh, article six of the agreement and it also shows up again in schedule B, which is the tax increment revenue note. And I would point out uh, and I guess include or request in the council's approval of this, in case we miss that number anywhere else in the agreement, we just came across this this afternoon, um, we will make them consistent with that, uh, that 155, 912 number. So with that, uh, I will stand for any questions the council may have. Item number 10 was approved by the Lakeville City Council. Next highlighted item on the agenda is item number 11, Granada Business Park, second edition. And once again, to provide the background information on this agenda item is Community and Economic Development Director, Dave Olson. We would typically have done this in, in reverse order, but because the business subsidy agreement required a public hearing, the final plat does, um, this is all being considered to be approved at the same meeting and it actually lined up fairly well. But uh, the uh, site and the council has seen this before, but the uh, outlot that uh, uh, actually Lakeville Technologies LLC purchased several years ago with the anticipation of and uh, hopeful, uh, I guess, that the, the, that the business was gonna continue to uh, to grow, and as, as Mr. Barsh pointed out, this is the second uh, expansion since, they, since Mendel located here in 2003. But uh, the slot was part of the uh, original uh, Granada Business Park, and it was platted as an outlot, which means it can't be developed until it's final platted into a lot. The plat was fairly straightforward, and uh, it uh, basically didn't change any of the uh, uh, dimensions of the property or changes of any of the right of way, but it basically goes from being a lot and block to a, uh, uh, excuse me, from an out lot to a lot and one block, one uh, Granada Business Park second edition. The total amount that we're be as being platted here is uh, uh, 1.18 acres. And then finally, what it looks like after the, uh, what will be constructed in terms of improvements uh, shows the uh, 18,000 square, uh, 700 square foot addition. Approximately half of it is on the, uh, uh, on the existing uh, lot, uh, the existing building on, but the other half is, is located on the uh, out lot, soon to be platted as a uh, lot and block in Granada Business Park Second. And as Councilmember LeBeau pointed out, more importantly, what this does is to, is to try and maximize the availability of uh, parking primarily for employees of the company. And um, you, you can't see it on this drawing, but the, uh, there will be chambers underneath the parking lot right in the, uh, along the easterly portion that will uh, uh, allow for under, under parking lot treatment of stormwater to, again, maximize the amount of, of both building and parking that can be developed on the site. Planning Commission held their public hearing on June 18th uh, and rec unanimously recommended approval of the preliminary and final plat. I should also point out the council is also being asked to, as, as is typically the case, there was a, uh, a utility easement along the northerly border of the existing lot one, block one, uh, contained the existing building. That easement is being vacated and uh, we will replace those easements with new easements around the perimeter of the new platted lot, uh, previously uh, platted as an out lot. Uh, the other point that I would like to point out is that we are, um, uh, it, it was deemed uh, the, the most uh, efficient way to go about this was just to plat the uh, new lot, the existing lot, existing building and the existing lot were a, a, a platted developable lot. And what we will do is uh, uh, do a, a zoning combination letter to basically uh, combine these two lots into one uh, developable. Uh, rather than going back and, and replatting the existing lot, it just didn't seem to um, prove or, or, or to be necessary or, or warranted. So uh, we kept it as simple as possible just to plat the uh, a lot into a lot and block and we'll do uh, issue a lot combination letter, which will then result in the uh, county treating it as one lot and issuing one tax statement for the entire uh, building uh, located on two, two separate platted lots. So um, 
with that, staff recommends approval with the uh, conditions uh, and as well as the uh, corresponding development contract, which has been signed uh, <clears throat> by the developer, uh, Lakeville Technologies LLC. We are in receipt of the uh, letter of credit and the uh, cash fees that we're due in conjunction with this plat. So uh, everything is in order. In fact, I think the uh, plat mylars were delivered to the office today, so we're moving this as quickly as we can and get the developer and their uh, contractor going on actual construction. Item number 11 was approved by the Lakeville City Council. Well, those were the highlighted items presented to the council at their July 6th, 2015 meeting. If you have any questions or comments regarding these agenda items, please feel free to call City Hall. The number is 952-985-4400. Thanks for watching this edition of Lakeville City Council Wrap-Up.